Hello, hello. Hello, happy. So we're not allowed to play music <clears throat> from 229 on, Mark. We're not. Facebook is blocking us every time I play any kind of music. Oh, so it's copyrighted. I need you to sing as we're <laughs> You do not need me this. to sing. <laughs> yes, you can. Please sing. No, uh, no. Otherwise, I have to, or, or, or somebody. Uh, <laughs> somebody how, how about who, uh, <laughs> Yes. So we'll give it a minute, but uh, that's why I killed the music. Sorry about that. That's gotcha. it. I've been instructed by the uh, powers to be. Got it. Yeah. Well, anyway, I got 2.30, so let's roll. <clears throat> yeah. I Industry update. <clears throat> My favorite uh, time of the week, because I feel like, you know, we've always kind of talked about being the economist of choice and and being a professional and knowing your craft and your trade. What does that mean to you, Mark? I mean, to me, it's just constantly reading, constantly looking at you know, news reports, things that are happening with the economy, with <clears throat> interest rates, you know, whether it's the macro economy talking about like GDP and, and things like and unemployment, things like that, yeah. or if it's talking about our current, you know, our, our current situation with uh, Ukraine and how it's affecting, you know, consumer uh, expectations, you know, just understanding what's happening in the market. So you can then in turn be able to tell your clients how their home sale is affected by it. Yeah. And I don't think you have to be an expert in all things economics, mm -hmm. but you have to know enough to be able to have a, a an intelligent conversation around it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of the key in this whole thing. Right. All right. So hopefully what you and I talk about and what we cover each week on this uh, industry update gives everybody those talking points and gives them that education around hey, we do all the legwork, we do all the research, we bring all the articles and the talking points. You right. just got to show up and and start to learn how to talk about it, right? Correct. Absolutely. Well, let me get my screen up here, Mark, and we'll dive right into this. All right. So we got good news this week. And the good news is it looks like the market finally took off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, you and I have been talking uh, on these calls and other team leaders on this calls. like, you know, a normal January and February, the last couple of years, pandemic uh, included, January and February just felt like the market never slowed down. It was pedal to the metal. We were flying high from the get go. But if you've ever sold real estate pre pandemic, <clears throat> that's not normal, right? Like what's normal? Right. Normal, normal in the Atlanta market is, uh, you know, sometime after the holidays around January 15th, the market starts picking up from what it was over the holidays. And then March 1st to 15th, you'll see another uptick in activity as the spring market launches and more inventory comes on the market. Um, and then, you know, it goes up to about 4th of July when it slows down for the summer. Long around uh, Memorial Day, or I'm sorry, uh, Labor Day after the holidays the summer holidays are passed when school starts <clears throat> yeah when school starts it picks back up again and then uh you know it's dies down again around november 15th as the holidays get near and then it just cycles all over again perfect <clears throat> well the good news is is it picked up this week i mean if this is just fulton county but we had been running 500 active properties since the start of the year right like we started with 354, which is really low. And then we just basically were floating at 500 until all of a sudden we're at 620 this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really feels like we're starting to move in a good direction. Well, there's a, there's a collective um, understanding among homeowners that, you know, spring is the best time to sell. And that's the, sort of the perception. So, they tend to wait till March 1st to start putting things on the market. So it's either March 1st or April 1st, which is why those two months are usually the biggest jumps. 100%. So we got 620 active in Fulton County. We had 401 pending and 294 closed. So right now, 144 under contract, active under contract. So, I mean, if I had buyers that were struggling to get into properties, I would be on it right now because mm -hmm. there's there's new inventory that just hit the market. 
be the first in the door. It's not going to last long. Uh, you, if you were being uh, a little passive because the last couple of weeks, you kind of ran out of things to show. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, there's 120 new listings that weren't active a, a week ago. You should right. be out there moving and grooving. Well, DeKalb, and okay, go ahead. I was just going to add to that, just as a, as a general piece of advice, uh, I would be looking at um, not just what's active, but be scanning those coming soon like crazy, but also like looking at the Georgia MLS listings as well as the FMLS listings, there's about a 97% overlap between those two, but there are those homes that are listed in one and not the other. And and when you find them, they're gems. So you, if inventory is low, which it has been, that's a place to find them. Yep. DeKalb County did not go up. Uh, I'm sorry, it did go up. It went from 257 to 323. My graph's wrong. Forgive me, I got to add the extra uh, week here. But it did go from 257 to 323. So it is up as well with 222 pending and 175 closed. Cobb County, uh, we didn't update the graph. It's 348 from 300. So you can see Cobb County was kind of floating at the 300 mark. Mm -hmm. It popped to 348. Gwinnett County, the other fourth big county, it really didn't go that much. 343, yeah, which is a little up, but uh, the big ones are DeKalb and Fulton, right? And uh, Fulton went from 501 to 620, and DeKalb went from 300 or 257 to 323. That's a lot of new inventory. Yeah. And that should feel like a lot of optimism for um, our agents out there that uh, might have been kicking tires or frustrated or feeling a little slow start to 2022, right. all there's, the above. There's a lot of fatigue right now because it's going through the holidays with a lower inventory than normal. And when our new normal is already really low, uh, you know, every buyer's agent I talk to is stressed. They're frustrated. Um, some newer buyers agents that have buyers but don't aren't able to put things under a contract are super frustrated. And I would just say hang in there because this shows you that in March things start picking up. So inventory is going to start picking up. It's not going to be less competitive, but you're going to have more opportunities. So yeah. you have to get really good at, at writing and crafting a good offer. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, Mark, you and I've been talking, and and the team leaders we've been talking about how. The two things we're hearing from agents right now, which is a little bit of a story and a little bit of a, a reality, is, hey, there's no inventory, that low inventory, low inventory, low inventory. And then the other thing I'm hearing is, hey, I got people that would sell their house. They just don't have anywhere to buy or they don't feel like they can win in that scenario. Right. What, what's the advice around that? Like, how do we coach people through those two conversations? Because yeah. I think it's very serious around these numbers. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think people need to be reaching out to their sphere and, and having that exact conversation. You know, if you could find what you're looking for, would you sell today? And the answer is going to be yes, a lot. But people are, have one of two sort of responses, which is um, I, I want to sell, but I, I don't know where I'd go. Um, or I want to sell, but I can't be, or because I don't know where I'm going to go yet and I need the money. So it's a cash issue more than a, like they know where they want to go, but they don't can't really make it all work logistically and because they can't do a contingent offer. So those yeah. are the two conversations. So I think it's about asking the questions and then offering solutions. I mean, Homeward is a great solution. There's other co companies out there, Ribbon, Orchard, do the same thing. And just understanding what tools you have in your arsenal to be able to offer to sellers and engage in the conversation. Because I can tell you that when you, you when you can get someone excited about their next home, and they they sort of self enroll into that conversation. But you have to sort of paint them a picture of how it's possible. Yeah, of course. And you know, I just throw a couple things out there, Mark. Is like uh, there's this four letter word called work, um, which we've kind of gotten a little reactive as an industry and i would just challenge everybody to find themselves in a place of being proactive mm -hmm. and if i got a buyer or, or that's looking at a certain area or i've got a seller that's wanting to move to a certain neighborhood i shouldn't be so far above door knocking or prospecting that neighborhood 
for actual property for my buyer to move into or my seller to move up to. And by the way, that's actually a listing prospecting activity, right? I actually could go list those houses. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that uh, is, a, is a way of being proactive and, it, and it's the hungry agent's going to go find the worm or what, whatever the the bird saying is i don't remember <laughs> right so so the early, get the the early is, bird will get the worm right that's the one yeah i'm gonna talk at our team meeting tomorrow is gonna be about what would you do if the mls went away yeah right we sit and as buyers agents you know representing buyers you sit there and you wait for properties to come on the market and what if you didn't have that option well, you'd have to go find properties, right? So yes. start thinking about how you can find properties because there are a ton of ways to proactively get listings for your clients to see, as well as getting listings to list. So, yeah. but it takes contacting people, reaching out, having a system and having something of value to offer. You know, uh, that's awesome. I, uh, I've thought about that a lot. Like, I, we don't think the MLS is going away. And obviously no. that's not w what we're saying. We're saying challenge your brain for a minute. Like if there was no MLS, how would you sell real estate? Yeah, how would you do this job? How would you go find a seller to sell? How would you find a buyer to buy? How, uh, how would you find a house for the buyer to buy? Like mm -hmm. get your brain wrapped into uh, not being so reactive on the property showing up in the MLS. What yeah. are we going to do about it? Yeah, make a list of every house that everyone in your sphere lives in right now. You know, how many bedrooms, how many baths, approximate price range, neighborhood, the things that you think about when you're looking for a home for a buyer and create your own inventory list. Yeah. And then start, you know, playing matchmaker between buyers and sellers. And it may not be just your buyers and sellers, it may be the buyers and sellers of the other agents in your market center or in, you know, in Facebook groups or whatever it is. Um, but there are a lot of buyer needs out there and, but there are also a lot of homes, a ton of homes. I'd also be popping golden letters out. Like it's going out of style. If you know, if you don't know what a golden letter is, it's basically just a, a simple little letter saying, Hey, would you sell your house? If I had a buyer that would pay top dollar today, I've got somebody looking in your neighborhood, you or any of your neighbors consider selling for top dollar. I mean, yeah. you don't have to overthink it. But just putting letters in the mail um, is, is a prospecting, a proactive way to go about this. Can I Another, share a letter real quick with on the screen? Yeah, sure. Cool. So this is just an example. Um, this isn't a golden letter, but this is an example I did for a friend of mine back in 2019. <clears throat> I sent it to 89 uh, homeowners at this one particular building that this guy wanted to live in. I got five different sellers reach back out to me out of 89. And if you notice, there's a blue ink signature. I, I wrote this and I signed it once in blue ink and just made color copy. So it looked like it was signed. They were all hand signed and the envelope didn't even have a handwritten envelope. It was just a label. Um, but it got five responses from sellers. One was an agent. Um, one was the president of the HOA who was going to be listing their property and three other sellers that were looking to sell in the next three to four months. Wow. So those types of things work. It, they work uh, all day long. It's just being proactive, right? Yeah. Uh, I was going to pop up one more thing on the screen real quick. Uh, you guys mentioned non-owner occupied properties. Like was it, I had some tech issues. So sorry, I missed the first couple of minutes. I don't want to no, worry. No, no, we didn't. Rick, that's, a, that's a great strategy. So another way is go to the tax records and, re and die, you know, for your target area, your farm area or an area you have expertise and confirm where tax bills are going. And if they're not going to the property, it's not uncommon that it's, it's a rental property or non-owner occupied at least. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good target too, because if you're an investor, this might be a premium time to consider selling your property. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, especially if they're out of state investors, because a lot of times they haven't even seen that property in years. They have no yeah. idea what's going on there. Yeah. Thanks. So one of uh, uh, our West Cobb office put this together and we can get this out, but it's just sample golden letters. Just a general one. Would you be interested in selling your home to a customer of mine? If so, call or text. Uh, I just sold your neighbor home. There were three offers that sold for 5,000 above asking price, which means two buyers weren't able to purchase that home. Would you be interested in selling your home to one of these buyers? Uh, I thought this one was genius. Um, 
Hey, I wrote an offer on your neighbor's home. Unfortunately, my c customer's offer was not accepted. In fact, there were six other offers on that property. Would you be interested in selling your home to one of my customers? Right? So you were the buyer's agent, didn't win, pop letters in the mail the next day. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a listing prospecting activity, right? So, but at the end of the day, I think, <clears throat> Not our agents, the agents out there, Mark. Uh, but yeah, we get caught up in our heads sometimes. There is no inventory. Uh, my seller can't sell because there's nowhere to go. We have to we have to play chess and figure out how to put, solve the pieces together, right? Well, and this is this is a perfect uh, opportunity to practice using your reticular activator, right, Rick? I mean, if you look for opportunity, you see opportunity. If you look for the fact that there's no image and you keep repeating that story, you're not going to see it even if it's right in front of you and biting in the, in the, you know, you know what? So I would just start telling yourself there's opportunity everywhere. There are listings everywhere. I can find a place for my buyers and your brain's going to start going to work looking for those. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. Couple other articles. Question unanswered too. So, you know, if you don't put, pose the question, you'll never get the answer. Someone else will ask the question and you'll be, again, relegated to the sideline. Yep. Yeah. How many people so here's the, the question to? There you go. I'm going to move on. Uh, here's hey, the. Hey, uh, Go ahead. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, when you all are talking about the golden letters, from what you've seen, is it better to just pop them in the mail or use a carrier service? would be expensive to use a courier service, I think, for each one individually. Right. Technically, you're not well, supposed well, I mean, to for, for, for neighborhood mailbox either. Just just know that it, but it's right. happened. Uh, here, here's the trick of the golden letter is it's got to look like it was it was a, a personal letter. Excellent. So if you start going mass production, you'll lose the the magic of it, right? Well, as soon as it looks like okay. a general offering, you, you discard it because you feel like you're, you know, kind of one in a, a million. Yep. So that's you where, wanna... like, to Mark's point, he didn't he didn't hand write the envelopes. But if you had to select fifteen or twenty or thirty that are non owner occupied, hand just take the time and, and hand write it. When you get a handwritten note or letter in an envelope that's not a traditional junk mail size, it just gets your attention. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Appreciate you. All right. 10 yes, year treasury. Here's what 10 year treasury has done year to date. Now, the we were talking interest rates were going to go up. Interest rates were going to go up. Um, the 10 year treasury is the most closely related thing we can look at that kind of predicts interest rates. See this little cliff right here? Russia invaded Ukraine on uh, February 24th. OK, so we actually saw this trend of where the the 10-year Treasury was going up and interest rates were going up. And then we hit a, we hit a financial cliff and the Treasury came down. It went back up and it's back down. So I actually um, I think interest rates are going to be a little volatile over the next couple of weeks based on what's going on in the in the world news and the financial markets and all the above. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, I think there's going to be one last shot at getting good interest rates on property, and it's going to be the spring market and uh, it, getting really good interest rates. I think we'll, ha we'll always have good interest rates, but I think there's going to be some little peaks and valleys over the next couple of weeks where I think interest rates uh, might be enticing to some buyers to lock and, and, and hold those rates. Would y'all add anything to that? I mean, you could do a did you know campaign, start calling all your buyer prospects and just suggest that, you know, if you know what price point they're in and you know what an, a point or two higher would do to their long term, you know, A, their, their monthly payment, B, the length of the loan, like a 10 year run, you know, hey, did you know that if the interest rate went up two points, here's what impact it would have on you financially. And like create a story that that touches them in inside of their lifestyle and not just a, you know, a number story, but a Hey, think about what you could do with an extra twenty thousand dollars you didn't put into a house. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, personalize it to the extent it, it, it impacts their daily, in their daily behavior or yeah. lifestyle. To Rick's point too, like leverage your um, the lenders in your market center uh, to get some of those um, data pieces. That I mean, they have marketing pieces that that lay out side by side comparisons of of rates and payments. 
Exactly. There you go. So then Atlanta Business Chronicle pops this one out there. Could this spring housing market be the busiest yet? Is that clickbait or is that a reality, Mark? I mean, I think it's going to be as busy, if not busier. The, the question is, are there going to be more homes to sell or slightly fewer homes? But I think the busyness is still going to st stay strong. You know, I I was I was a little nervous about the uh, less homes to sell comment up until this week. Like mm. I, I knew it was coming, but it just hadn't come yet. You know, and this week the numbers really took off on active listings. So that's such a positive sign that that statement right there will be true this year. That this spring well, housing market could be the busiest yet. The other thing we need to remember is that the numbers we pull from FMLS only show you know, the on-market activity. And there are more and more and more deals happening off-market because agents are having to be proactive and reach out to people that don't have their home listed yet. So yeah. I think Cause, those- Because what if there was no them. MLS, Mark? What's that? Because what? how would you sell if there, real estate if there was no MLS? Exactly. You'd reach mm -hmm. out to buyers and sellers and people you know, right? Absolutely. You know, I popped this article up here because uh, Brian Buffini is a different coaching company, but Brian Buffini historically um, is all about uh, relationship-based real estate uh, sales, right? And he, he's, a, he's a huge advocate around database and relationships. And he made this comment this week in NMA said, uh, don't be afraid of the iBuyers he still believes relationships will remain supreme. And I believe that very thing, same thing is if agents are deeply in relationship with their database, I think that will always win over corporate institutional money. But that means the agents have to be proactive. They have to be in relationship with people and responsive, i.e. answering their phone and being available prior to uh at website x swiping them up off the internet right well and i feel like we as agents also have to have more tools in our our you know arsenal these days and we have an iBuyer at keller williams we have an in internal one at keller offers so knowing what your products are that you can offer because you can offer them the same thing anyone else can and then some so yeah. understanding every arrow in your quiver so that when you go out and have those conversations you're equipped to pivot to talk about what they're interested in. There you go. Well, I don't have this put together just yet. Um, and I'll publish it when it's totally done. Um, but here's Gary Keller in the vision speech uh, goes through the numbers that drive real estate. And we publish once a year those same numbers, but just for Metro Atlanta. And so here's the annual home sales in Metro Atlanta sourced out of FMLS and, and Freddie Mac, right? So uh, there was 123,164 home sales in 2021. Look at the gap between 2020. Mm -hmm. I felt that, did y'all feel that? That's a big jump. Absolutely. And this is a perfect example to illustrate the point that it's, it's not that there are no homes to sell more buyers the market is just more competitive because there are more buyers per home than there have been so you just have to be a better agent these days to get it yeah. done but it, i don't see any single year that had that big of a jump maybe here 2014 to 2015 uh but normally we just have a little trend line of, of increased population but all of a sudden boom mm -hmm. uh almost 20 percent growth right if you look at the monthly home sales compared to the last three years, um, you know, what we were talking about, I, I, I probably should put 2022 January and February on here just to show the difference. But, you know, it was pedal to the metal, like Mark and I said, from the get go the last couple of years. And but you still see that traditional bell curve. But what I don't see is that uh, September, October, November slowdown as much in the last couple of years, but I'm going to anticipate that's going to happen this year is we're going to have that, that selling the March to uh, September pedal of the metal selling season. And we're going to have a slower uh, second half, third and fourth quarter. 
is my prediction, but we'll see, right? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Everything's weird. Um, but you can just see that that uh, that dark red block almost mm -hmm. exceeded every month over uh, the previous years. Mm -hmm. Know what I mean? Um, annual median price jumped to 317 in Metro Atlanta in 2021. And our month's supply of inventory should not be a shock to anybody. It's just so tight in in Metro Atlanta compared to the years before. The previous slide for a second. Yeah. So just looking at where when so you know before the pandemic, at the end of 2019, you're at 248, and by the end of 2021, you're at 317. I mean, just, that's just that's a great story right there. To Seventy thousand dollars. Hear about because they have cash in their house that they didn't know they had. Right. Yeah. Anyone that's on their house for two years or more right now, I mean, honestly, one year or more, but two years or more, they don't have to pay capital gains tax. Uh, anyone that's owned their property for that long or longer has a chunk of cash in there that they probably didn't expect. But here, here's a weird question, Rick or Mark. Feel free to take it. Do you think the people that live in this house, what percentage of them do you think are consciously aware that their house is actually worth that? That's know. hard to answer. I mean, it, I, I'm, I, I'm sure it's, everybody knows that the housing market's on fire. I mean, there's no secret to that narrative. The actual number, you know, it's like, hey, I bet here's well, how about this for a script? I bet you you've you're aware that your house is worth more than it was a year ago. If you'd like to know more precisely what that figure is, call me for a free analysis. I mean, I think a real, some any real estate agent calling their database today. What a cool conversation to be able to call your database and say, hey, I just want to tell you how much equity is in your house. Um, and, and you know, the, the, you will you will experience very little resistance to that phone call. Right. As, well, like especially if it's somebody you sold a house to, you know, go back three, four, five years if you've been in business long enough. And why not just go ahead and, and proactively create a CMA for every single homeowner that you've helped put into a home and say, by the way, I just want to celebrate some amazing news and then follow up with a call and ask them how they're enjoying their home. Yeah. And they'll tell you if there's a deficiency or an opportunity or yeah. let the conversation evolve. But what a cool way to pat yourself on the back for helping them create an amazing. Yeah, you, it's right. to feel good, right? Yeah. And they feel good. So isn't that the nature of the game? Yep. There was a so obviously month that. supply is kind of nuts. Um, I actually, when we were on that uh, call with an economist, they kind of challenged my thinking around this. But I've always thought six months was a balanced market, but he actually said it differs by major city. And he said a balanced market in Atlanta is typically around four, four and a half months of inventory. Um, so we're still in a seller's market, but uh, I've always said six. They they challenge that around four. Um, so obviously home price depreciation was huge in that 2021 mark. Um, mm -hmm. This is an outlier, obviously, in 2013. Um, but at the end of the day, we're expecting 2022 to be pretty strong uh, price appreciation as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the interest rates. You can see where we were back uh, a year ago and where we are today. It's not too much drastic, but it's certainly on the high. Mm -hmm. But Rick, not to date you or me or anybody, but here's the 10 year. And if, if rates are here today and look at all those years where they were way higher. Mm -hmm. well, you know my what first I mean? house was at 8%. Yeah. And I, and I thought I stole money from the lender when I left the closing because I floated down from eight and a half like the week before. I got a lucky tick down and I was doing cartwheels all the way home at 8%. How about that? Yeah. So I'll get this document out to everybody. I, I've got to get the affordability fixed. I don't have that fixed. NAR is kind of weird with their affordability publishing, publication. But as soon as I get it, I mean, you know, Mark, we kind of we started this talk today with, hey, if you're the economist of choice, show up. Um, we'll give you all the conversations or what, what, what you need to be able to have in your dialogue uh, as a real estate agent. So if you were on this call today or listening to our live stream, what would you want your agents to take away from this call today? 
Um, I mean, be proactive. Don't wait for the property you're looking for to show up on the MLS. If it does, great. But that means everyone else is seeing it too. So be proactive and re use, the, use the tools you have, which is your database, the people you know, the neighborhoods you have access to. You can door knock anywhere. And honestly, there's just a lot of different ways you can go about building business. You know, I just made a quick list while we were sitting here. You could do a, instead of doing a first time home buyer summer, you could do a, how to win um, a multiple offer strategy in today's real estate market uh, Zoom seminar and get yeah. leads that way, right? Like you can get, get buyers that way that are able to, to actually make offers and have cash. Um, how, to, how to sell your house uh, or how to buy a house before you sell yours and using a home word or one of those other tools, like do seminars like that. There's just a lot of tactical things you can do to get out there and get in front of people and create your own inventory. But you have to sort of like, you have to work. There you go. Sure. What Rick, if you anything you did? Yeah, what if you partnered with a staging expert or an interior designer, kind of like you triggered this with your letter that said, you know, hey, what would you do to prepare your house now for a sale in a, you know, a year or two? Because people are always curious of what they need to do to be prepared. Why wait till the day you wanna sell? for a free mm -hmm. seminar on how to, you know, prep your, you know, prepare your house or cosmetically update. Yeah. Here's my interior decorator of choice. I mean, it might be a, a lot of people are just curious and might enjoy that, that content. And by the way, mm -hmm. I, I meant to add one thing earlier. I said, you know, when you're, you're, you're um, calling someone to say, Hey, you know, if you were going to sell or, you know, celebrating their, their purchase and sharing the CMA close out with, you know, don't always go in thinking you're going to, you know, sell their house or help them buy a different house. You know, remember, there's always a, their network that's really what you're after and that who do you know that I should know that would like to experience what you've experienced during this home sale or purchase experience from a year ago that's now made you $20,000. Yeah. And so it's not really them, it's who they know that might at the office or in right. their family or neighbors that have talked about it that you'd want to set, you know, to Mark's point, the reticular activator in their brain so that when they go into work the next day, somebody mentions real estate, ah, I got your guy. Yeah, we got we got to get we got to start picking a phone up again. I think it's necessary in this market right now. Um, I'll tell you a dialogue I'm toying with or playing with right now is okay, seller. I realize you're scared to sell your house because you don't know where you you would go or you, you're you're a little nervous about that transition. What if you could choose your closing date? Would you sell? Meaning you could close whenever you wanted. So I know an iBuyer or an investor would let you hold on to your house and close six months later. They don't care, right? Yeah. So yeah. How, how do you take that objection off the table? Well, uh, and, it's, and it's, at what price would you sell? Because we all know there is a number <laughs> and maybe they don't number. know. Maybe they don't know what, you know, the, winning the lottery is in the sale of house, but there's some people in certain areas that are getting money they never dreamed they could. There you go. Absolutely. Happy Monday, gentlemen. Thank y'all for tuning yeah. in. Good to see you.